during these few years after the war. Anything else notable that sticks out to you and what role you think the 332nd and the other Tuskegee Airmen played in integrating the Air Force? Well, I think they they, they played a uh, tremendous role as far as uh, uh, those that were left in the or stayed in the service. They uh, played a tremendous role because they went on to become uh, high-ranking officers, a number of them. Uh, one was a fellow by the name of Chappie, Chappie James. When I left him, he was a uh, first lieutenant like, uh, uh, like I was. And uh, Chappie turned out to be a four-star general later on and he uh he was the commanding general of norad the uh, north uh north atlantic uh i forget the uh, what the acronym stands for but uh it was a large division of the uh united states air force at the time there was uh, general benjamin o davis the uh, west pointer who led the uh, 332nd fighter group uh, he ended up as uh, lieutenant general, and there are many that ended up as uh, uh, colonels and other generals and, and that type of thing. So the Air Force was uh, paramount and the foremost in uh, integrating the uh, the services there, and they were the first to uh, to do such. Well, I mean, that's such a great time for you to be involved in that. And I also think just as a history person, I think, What's wrong with people forgetting the Civil War? I mean, 10% of the Union forces were African-American. I mean, I thought this was settled in the 1860s that soldiers could perform the same. So it's sad people had to be reminded, but I'm glad they finally got the message. And after you left the service, you had mentioned earlier that you faced discrimination trying to become a commercial pilot. What was your experience after you left the service? What did you do after that? I hit my mater and uh, I was a baggage man. Uh, in Pennsylvania Railroad, and I was down on the third level down under the train station there, and I was taking baggage, uh, uh, Life magazine baggage and that type of thing off of the uh, boxcars. And, uh, but it was also uh, at that time that I uh, stopped in the offices of two prominent airlines at the time there. Uh, uh, one airline summarily uh, uh, rejected rejected me by saying that they weren't hiring at the time there. The uh, other airline, I think the the uh, personnel officer, uh, I came out and wanted to talk to me, and I, I guess he felt some pangs of conscience and that he deserved explaining why they weren't uh, taking me, even though they were uh, accepting applications or uh, pilots at the time there, but he went on to say that, well, you know, he said, uh, just just look at the situation and imagine walking down the aisle of the aircraft with your, uh, by the passengers with your uh, uh, airline uniform on and how the destroy, how the, how the faith of the passengers might be destroyed by seeing this uh, uh, black man walking down the aisle to take control of the aircraft and fly them to wherever they were going to go. <laughs> but uh, anyway, this very same airline, uh, I don't know how many years later it's been, 60 years, something like that, uh, 65 years later, it sent me a very, very, very nice uh, plaque and letter apologizing for the uh, reception that I met uh, in applying uh, for the airlines at that time, and uh, they had the set of wings that they had uh, that they sent to me also, and they were engraved, and it was the official wings of the airline pilots that use in this airline, and you know went on to say uh, uh, captain of the airline that was in the what was known as awarded me the uh, honorary captain. Yeah, I understand you received two honorary captain status yes, from two different airlines. Airline. Yes, that's correct. Uh, they did the same. The first airline uh, received, I received this honorary status about, uh, oh, I guess about three or four years ago. And the other airline, I received the honorary status about six, six months ago. Well, I'd like your perspective on 
the legacy of the Tuskegee Airmen. And you mentioned this event where you received honorary status. And in recent years, the Austrian government recognized and apologized the lynching. So it's good that they acknowledge this, but this is like decades and decades after the event. And yes, right. it, it's sometimes in my mind, I, I crunch events together and don't realize the length of time that the civil rights movement and civil rights legislation, for example, is two decades after World War II. And then these other events yes. happen decades after that. So from your perspective, what do you think about this legacy of integration and it taking as long as it did and recognizing some of the the past wrongs and people people acknowledging all this. What, what's your take of on all of this and the legacy of the Tuskegee Airmen? Well, I think the le- legacy of the Tuskegee Airmen is that uh, uh, I, I think it's uh, recognized that uh, that uh, color, uh, as far as uh, given an opportunity, uh, as far as color is concerned, is that. Uh, uh, accomplishments can be made you can you can go ahead and set your dreams and pursue your dreams without uh, as I said the impediment of really color the skin or something like that but uh, I, I think we still have a, a, a I started to say a long way to go is that you know there's still prejudice that's uh, evident I think that the African American Youth uh, faces uh, some of the same problems that the uh, youth faced back back in my time, uh, uh, to a uh, maybe a slightly lesser lesser degree. I think the uh, opportunities uh, are far greater today than they were uh, during my time. Uh, uh, in private industry and that type of thing is that uh, you see the captains of, uh, of uh, large industries of uh, Fortune 500, as we used to call them, industries, big industries that uh, are uh, people of color and uh, also companies and industries that uh, recognize that they're going to hire a person based on their uh, qualifications and abilities, and uh, uh, not because of uh, their physical appearance or their their color or that type of thing. So yeah, but still, I think that uh, it remains a, a a big thing for our youth to go ahead and recognize that the opportunities are there, and uh, that if they have dreams, is to you know, follow those dreams, so go after them uh, aggressively. And uh, if they find out that uh, there's some uh, impediment or, or uh, something that uh, may prevent the fruition of that dream there is to uh, have a uh, backup uh, position. And I, I think a lot of kids today want to go and uh, uh, go into athletics, playing uh, football or basketball or some sort of thing like that. And, you know, it's not too many that are going to go ahead and turn out to be uh, the top players and things like that. And, of course, there's always the injuries that take place. And I say always have the fallback position there, and I, 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 I try not to. Uh, turn the kid away from uh, uh, athletics and that type of thing, but I try to tell them build a good backup position there and get the basics in, get the fundamentals in so that uh, you can go ahead and uh, follow another path to your uh, uh, to your future. Well, sir, thank you for sharing all this with us. Your book is Soaring to Glory, a Tuskegee Airman's firsthand account of World War II. And is there anything else that you hope this story will inspire in others? Uh, no, I guess I'll probably think of a lot of things, <laughs> you know, after we conclude this uh, this interview here. That happens like, to me uh, every single time. 
<laughs> I should have said this, and I should have said that, and I should have done this, and I should have done that. But anyway, maybe there'll be a second time, Scott, that uh, we can go ahead and polish this up more. Oh, that'd be great. I'd love that. Well, sir, uh, thank you very much, Lieutenant Colonel Stewart. I really appreciate you taking your time to join us. Thank you, Scott. I enjoyed it. Okay, so that is all for today. That's today's episode. Thank you for joining me. As always, I want to thank the Knowlton's Rangers, especially our spy masters. Tyler from Colorado, Josh Reddick, Baron Fraser, Chris from Maine, Carl from Norway, Moondoggy from Ohio, Rick Knowlton, Vic and Irene, Mike from New York, Michelle, and Marlene. I'll explain what that is in a second. If you like the show and want to help it grow, there are four easy ways for you to do it. One, like and subscribe to the show on the podcast player of your choice. This helps spread the word about the show. Two, join our Facebook group. Here we can keep the discussion going about new episodes and you can talk about what you like and didn't like. And you can find this group if you just search for History Unplugged on Facebook. Three, we have an online store with t-shirts, phone covers, and other accessories featuring awesomely bad history puns that were crowdsourced by you, the audience. And you can find that if you go to teespring.com slash stores slash history dash unplugged. That's teespring.com slash stores slash history dash unplugged. Four, and this is really the best way to dive deep with History Unplugged, and that's to become one of the Knowlton's Rangers. If you know your American history, you know the Knowlton's Rangers were an elite spy and reconnaissance group in the American Revolutionary War, but it's also the name of the membership program of History Unplugged. You can join at three levels. If you join at the level of Scout, you can hear all the episodes of History Unplugged completely ad-free and get early access to new episodes, at least a week early. If you join at the Intelligence Officer level, you get special bonus episodes, like a 10-part series on the World War II hero Audie Murphy, a multi-part series called Ottoman Lives about different people in the Ottoman Empire, and a series called Rendezvous with Death that looks at biographical profiles of Americans who went to fight in World War I before America entered the war. The last level is Spy Master, where you get all that stuff, but you also get three hardcover history books, Forging a President, How the Wild West Created Teddy Roosevelt, Race to the Top of the World, Richard Byrd and the First Flight to the North Pole, and The Last Fighter Pilot, the true story of the final combat mission of World War II. Another bonus is you can choose a history topic for me to focus on for an entire episode that can go up to an hour, and I'll answer whatever question you have for me, and you get a shout out at the end of each episode. If you want to learn how to become a member of the Knowlton's Rangers, Go to patreon.com slash unplugged. That's patreon.com slash unplugged. All right. Well, that is all for my spiel. Thanks for listening to the History Unplugged podcast from ancient Greece to the Cold War and everything else in between. See you next time.